I swear, if all of these books are like shitty non-fiction books I've read, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my laptop out the window. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today, we're gonna be reacting to the 10 highest rated books I've ever read on Goodreads and whether I agree that they should be the 10 highest books I've ever read. They probably won't be. It won't be like my 10 favorite books of all time. <laughs> Don't be closed minded because you will not get anywhere in life. Right. But I am hoping that it's gonna be mostly books that I think were really good as well. I'm hoping we're not gonna have many howlers, but it'll be interesting to see. I don't think I've ever looked this up, but I've seen a few people do this video and it always looks really fun. I think, if I had to guess, <laughs> But for my thinking cap on. I would guess that we're gonna see some, I feel like fantasy, like kind of classic fantasy often gets highly rated. We're gonna see series, like second or third books in series, I think, because with series, like you typically only read on if you're really enjoying it. So by the time you get to the end of a series, the people who are reading that book are the people who have loved the rest of the series. So I would think like later editions in series are always more highly rated. Other than that, I don't really know what to expect. Maybe something like Six of Crows or Crooked Kingdom I reckon will be on there. We're gonna go from highest rated to 10th because that's the, the easiest way for me to sort it but I'm gonna zoom in so that I'm hopefully only gonna be able to see one at a time. But before we get into the video I want to thank today's sponsor which is Skillshare. I absolutely love Skillshare. I've used it for years and years like way before I had my channel so I really love working with them because A it's a service I genuinely love and have used for a long 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 time and B it means I can you know help you guys use it for free try it out for free and hopefully fall in love with it like I do so if you don't know Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for pretty much any creative skill you can imagine they have photography filmmaking editing productivity so many different topics which there are so many classes on I've just started and really been enjoying the ultimate self-care playbook discover and nurture your centered self by Jonathan Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye because I've always thought that self-care is super duper important especially when it comes to being creative and like especially with like YouTube as well like you have to look after yourself I think if you're gonna be creative and perform at your best but I also think it can be super easy to forget that so this class has really been helping to remind me of that and help me kind of recenter myself there are no ads on Skillshare and there are constantly new classes being added so you'll always be finding something that's great for you now, very, 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 very excitingly, the first 1,000 of you to click the link below will get one month free of Skillshare, which is an amazing deal. Honestly, you have nothing to lose. My advice, just go click that link, get that one month free, and see if you can find something that really helps you kind of like improve your creative skills and have a lot of fun. Okay, let me go ahead and get Goodreads up. I really don't know what to expect. This is gonna be very, very interesting. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. You are so inquisitive, my darling. <laughs> okay, what is book one? Oh, okay. Yep, yep, I agree. I agree with book one. <laughs> so the highest rated book on my Goodreads that I have read is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman with an average rating of 4.7. Do you know how incredible that is? If you use Goodreads, you know nothing ever has an average rating of 4.7. And I absolutely agree. I gave this five stars. I, <laughs> listen, <laughs> if you watch a lot of my videos, you will know. I love Heartstopper very dearly. It's Nick and Charlie falling in love, loving each other, and it's just so cute. Also important to note, again, this is the fourth in a series, so that is why it is the highest, you know? If you didn't like the first, you know, Heartstopper or this, by the second one, you were kind of like, meh, you probably haven't continued on with the series, and it's a new release, so the people who have read it are the people who are really excited for it to come out, but I absolutely agree. The best graphic novel series in the world. The best maybe the best song in the entire world. There's only one left to come out, which I don't agree. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, not surprised that it is the highest rated book that I've ever read. Right, what is number two? Oh, 
Okay, I really, really wasn't expecting to see this. This is not a book I thought I would see on this list. Okay, so number two, the second highest rated book I've ever read is Whites on Race and Other Falsehoods by Otega Uagba. This has an average rating of 4.68 with 908 ratings, so much, much less than Heartstopper. I gave this four stars. I really, really enjoyed this. This is a super short non-fiction, kind of talking about their experience as a black person in the UK, surrounding the death of George Floyd last year and a lot of like the performative activism and white guilt that was seen around that time. It's very very short, I think it's less than 100 pages and it's very very impactful but I don't, it's not like my favourite non-fiction I've ever read. I think the length of it meant I didn't fully fall in love with it but I, I think it's a great non-fiction, I read it super recently and I think this book has a lot of you know things that everyone can learn from and I think it's something that everyone should read. So. I really liked this, but I wasn't expecting it to be in the top 10 highest rated books I've ever read. Like, I really wasn't. Yeah, that's really surprised me. Okay, let's see what number three is. Okay, so I scrolled down a little bit. <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. No, I'm not allowed. I know I'm not allowed. And number three and four. <laughs> are uh, Heartstopper Volume 3 and Heartstopper Volume 2. I shouldn't be- listen, this is to be expected. Heartstopper Volume 3 has a 4.64 average rating with 67,000 ratings and Heartstopper Volume 2 has a 4.62 average rating with 86,000 ratings. So can you see how the rating is going up <laughs> for each in the series? That is typically what you find with series, I think. And listen, we know that I love it. Do you think Heartstopper Volume 1 is going to be on this list as well? I don't know. Very rightfully on this list. Like, nothing, there's, if anything's gonna be on here, it should be this. Like, literally the best books in the world. Literally, listen. <laughs> what is number five? Oh, oh I, I fucking called it. it. I fucking called it. it. Next, at number five, with a rating of 4.59, with 333,000 ratings, is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I gave this five stars as well. I think I, I did give this 4.5, but I upped it to a five. I loved this. This is the second, obviously, in the Six of Crows duology. This is much better than Six of Crows, in my opinion. Like, Six of Crows was really, really good. It was like a four star. But this one, you know, the, the crows stay in Ketterdam, and I love the atmosphere there, and I think the heist element and the reveals and the planning in the, you know, in the heist from Kaz are much more detailed. If you don't, I mean, you know what the plot is. I, I very much doubt if you're watching this video, you don't know what the plot of Crooked Kingdom is. Um, I don't know what a bee jork is, Benny. We just went on holiday and my dad read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom while he was there. I think he gave Six of Crows like a four, 4.5, and then Crooked Kingdom I think was like a five. He loved it. And you know, my dad typically reads a lot of like old white man fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> that's typically what he's read before but um he really really loves six of crows and crooked kingdom so i think that shows that they this series is so great and is really for everyone it's not just for like YA girl readers like some people like to like categorize it as it really is a book that everyone can enjoy and love yeah i can't wait to read like King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. I need to read them soon. I think he's gonna read them before me though. I think he's he's reading Shadow and Bone trilogy now. And then I think he's gonna read them before I get around to them. But yeah, Crooked Kingdom, I think very much deserves to be on this list. As of yet, we haven't really had any that like I disagree with. They've all mostly been five stars and one four star. So let's see what's next. This is number six, right? I think. Oh, okay, this is a good one. Let me go get it. So coming at number six with an average rating of 4.58 and 13,000 580 ratings is Natives Ruin and Class oh no Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire by Akala. This is non-fiction again about race and this is from Akala who's like a famous poet writer um, in the UK and this is particularly about the roots of empire in racism in the UK. I gave this four stars as well but this is I would say I preferred this to um, Otega Uragba's book. I thought this was so interesting, so well researched. It does draw on Akala's experiences as a mixed race boy growing up in London and uh, particularly like growing up quite poor and so bringing class into that and this was just fascinating. I often recommend this as particularly if you live in the UK a non-fiction on race that I would really, really recommend. If you are in the UK, there's sometimes a tendency to be like, oh, we're not as bad as the US. 
You know what I mean? Or not to say that, but to believe it deep down. And I think that's a really troubling belief because of our history of empire and colonialism. And this really brings that out and researches that. Okay, number seven. Oh, really? Oh, wow, okay. With an average rating of 4.57, but with 833,000 ratings, which is crazy. So this is like the most consensus we've ever seen in a book, is The Nightingale by Christian Hanna. So I think I read this in like a highest rated books on my TBR video, so maybe I should have expected it. So this is like a, a non-fiction, this isn't non-fiction, this is a historical fiction book about World War II and about these two sisters in World War II. <sighs> Here's the thing, I rated this four stars. I did enjoy it. It wasn't five stars. I think I was hoping for five stars. It was four stars. But I, I kind of look back on it as maybe like a 3.75 because I think this is the kind of book that is meant to just make you feel devastated. Like I cried so much and sometimes I look back on it and I'm like, it felt a bit, not exploitative, but like, you know, when a book is just intended to make you sob. And I don't know how good that makes, like my rating was out of that instinctive emotion that I had just experienced and now I'm removed from that emotion I don't necessarily look back on the book and feel the same way. I did enjoy it though and I can see why this is such a well-loved you know popular book I can I can see that and I really did enjoy it so I don't disagree with this at all. Okay number eight which I've literally just read with a rating of 4.55 with 88,000 ratings is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So I just read this on holiday I'll leave the link to the vlog where I went on holiday because it is flopped. <laughs> I was off filming this video and I'm like guys listen I'm in a nice cottage why don't you want to see that? <laughs> clap if you care. <laughs> clap, if you, clap if you care. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I definitely agree with this. I gave this 4.5 stars. This is a sci-fi by the author of The Martian where this guy wakes up on this ship in space and his crewmates are dead and he doesn't really know what he's doing or why he's there and he has to kind of piece together the puzzles. There is this extinction level threat to humanity uh, to do with the sun and these microorganisms that seem to be near the sun. It's a great book but the best part of this is a spoiler. Like it's a hundred percent a spoiler but I really really love this. This reads so fast. You look at it and it's quite big but it reads really really fast and I would really recommend the audiobook as well. The audiobook really comes to life about a third of the way in. So I absolutely agree with this and I'm glad to see it on this list because it was it was really really good and it's made me want to reread The Martian. I think I've read that like three times in my life. One of the books I've reread the most but something about Andy Weir's writing is so rereadable. What's number nine? Oh. <laughs> it's this. <laughs> It's Hustle Volume 1 with an average rating of 4.52 with 120,000 ratings. So listen, we're not surprised. We've spoken about this. I am so glad Heartstopper takes up four <laughs> of the top ten. I just think it's amazing. I think it's so well deserved. I love Heartstopper so much. Like to the end of my days. I, I love it. Okay, and what is number ten? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, that's a great one. Okay, let me try and get it. This is a bit precarious. Okay, let's slide you along. No, 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 no. That was fucking scary. My heart's going pitter patter, pitter patter. I feel sick like I could throw up. No, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to collect myself. Number 10, let's get it out without actually breaking everything this time. With an average rating again of 4.52 with 6,653 ratings is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is a middle grade where we follow Amari discovering this Bureau of Supernatural Affairs that her brother used to work at who has now gone missing and she's invited for a trial at this, at this bureau. And um, it's all about like discovering magic and there's an evil magician and this was such a great middle grade one of my favorite middle grades I've ever read I'm so excited for book two to come out it was just such a magical nostalgic middle grade it, you know, it really has a nostalgic feeling of you know like this magical trial that she's on and I'm I'm really happy to see it on this list I think everyone should read this there's something really amazing about this book so that is the 10 highest books that I have read and the highest rated books that I've read I agreed with all of them pretty much they're all four or five stars let's actually see how far I have to scroll down 
for one that I maybe give three stars. 15, okay, number 15 is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson with a rating of 4.5, and I don't agree with that. <laughs> I didn't really like Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, and I'm not gonna continue on with that series. So that's like how far we have to go down for one that I disagreed with. But yeah, the top 10, particularly the fact that four are made up by Hotstopper are all ones that I pretty much agree with and really, really enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of any of these books. If there's any of them you disagreed with that you really didn't like, I would really be interested to know. And yeah, make sure you check out that one month free of Skillshare down below. I absolutely love Skillshare. There's so many courses I wanna do um, and wanna explore. So yeah, make sure you check out that link. If you've gotten to the end, comment any kind of spacey planet star emoji down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye.